They've been able to out hit Florida State in the home run category, but that resilient bunch of Florida State has been able to put up a bunch more runs. But Louisville coming in is uh, the best hitting team in the ACC average wise. And you take a look at Sarah Gordon and she's an exciting freshman from Lexington, South Carolina, hit her 10th home run of the season last night. Taylor Roby, who uh, also is a good pitcher for this team, bats before her in the third slot. And Allie Dubois gets the start for Florida State. We know that Kat Sandercock is the typical starter in the circle in the Friday night game. But Dubois gets the nod in game two. Excited to see Louisville attack this starter for Florida State. And both of these teams use a lot of pitchers. Florida State certainly with a full pitching staff. Sandercock, as you mentioned, definitely is their ace. And Corby Otis coming into this series absolutely red hot at the plate. I want to welcome the audience who just watched lacrosse on the ACC network to this softball game. Louisville taking on Florida State. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you from Tallahassee, where Corby Otis is leading things off for the cards against Ali Dubois. Florida State won the opener of this three-game series last night and therefore clinched its 18th regular season championship in the ACC. And they have clinched the top seed in next week's ACC tournament, which will be played at Notre Dame. Sarah Gordon will bat fourth this afternoon. The freshman had a big two-run home run in a game last night that really came down literally to the last out. Louisville left the bases loaded in the top of the seventh with Taylor Roby up. She struck out to end the game. Otis continues to be hot for this club, leading things off with the single. Well, and with Dubois in the circle for Florida State, we know that Kat Sandercock usually gets the Friday night start. Dubois comes in her 13th start of the season, her 21st appearance, and has been getting comfortable with how to pitch, where to pitch, and when to throw those pitches. She relies on the drop to multiple levels. Not a ton of velocity, but likes to keep the ball down. Defense has to be ready. They will definitely have to be able to field the ground ball and play clean defense. Dubois is a transfer from Boston University, one of the seniors getting honored on this senior weekend. Mac Leonard wisely let that bunt attempt by Easton Loftus go foul. A low, ton of speed for Lotus to be able to step in and put the ball on the ground like this. Good job. Keeps her feet in the box, but pulls that one just too far down the first baseline. Rolls foul. She's going to have to do something else now that the defense is alerted to that short game. Lotus down 0-1. Takes the ball up high. Veteran Michaela Edenfield behind the plate for Florida State. Had a huge double that turned into insurance runs in last night's game one. Well, Edenfield has not been able to match her power numbers from a year ago, but she has continued to put the ball in play with runners in scoring position. That one got a piece of her. And that's one thing head coach Lonnie Alameda has talked about. When you're back there catching, you kind of get beat up a little bit. And she's also dealing with the true pitching staff is Edenfield. And as coach has used a variety of pitchers. And we see Dubois today making her 13th start of the season. Lonnie Alameda, Alana Marie Alameda. Did you know her first name was Alana? No, but it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but known to all of us as Lonnie, has done a terrific job at Florida State, won a national championship five years ago. 1-2 to Lotus. 
Edenfield with the throw down, a perfect throw, but not in time. Corby Otis is now 20 for 20 on the season in stolen bases. On a great jump over there at first, Edenfield has to take time to receive the ball before she can get out of those legs and come up with a nice throw to second. Good spot, Clarity fields it well, but just too much speed and gives Louisville an opportunity with a runner in scoring position. And the 2-2 two -two to Lotus now. Chops it up the middle, that'll get the runner over, and she herself is safe. So runners on the corners with nobody out. Well, that is a veteran move to be able to step in like that. Just a sophomore, but Lotus on the changeup, slows down her motion and is able to stay in the box long enough to keep the bat head down through the ball, get the nice hop, and now runners on the corners for Louisville. So a terrific start with Taylor Roby coming up. Roby with 21 home runs on the season. That is tied for the most of any player in the nation. Taryn Kern, the great freshman for Indiana, also has 21. So what's your approach now? Well, with the base open, you definitely don't want to give too much to Roby. Last night, she stepped in with bases loaded and gave a scare to Florida State with a foul ball that was a home run, but because it was foul, didn't got erased, and then they got the big strikeout to end the game. Yeah, it was a very nervous moment, and now they have Lotus tied up between first and second, but you have to be careful with Otis, who comes in to score. Lotus eventually thrown out at second. That play is executed perfectly by Louisville, recognizing that as this throw goes all the way through, over at first, Lotus's job is to make sure she gets in the rundown. And as Flaherty gives the ball to first, it gives an opportunity for Otis to come in and score. Louisville trades an out for a run, but this base running is exactly what you need to do. Flaherty giving the ball to Leonard, by that transition in the throw to first, it gives an opportunity to come around. And now Roby sends it to the wall and backed up against it. Waycaser makes the catch. So and that the last two at bats, oh. she has barely missed home runs. She is doing so well. And what else would you expect from the national leader in home runs? This is the defense behind Dubois, Muffley over at short, Devin Flaherty at second, Mudge, Kerr, Janai, very good center fielder, and Waycaser, and Mac Leonard manning things over at first. Christina Hartley getting the start today at third base for the Seminoles. Now with two out and nobody on, here's Sarah Gordon, hit a home run yesterday in the loss. You talked about how K Taryn Kern for Indiana is a really good freshman. Well, Sarah Gordon is such a dynamic player for this Louisville squad. She's been part of the battery all year, sitting behind the plate. Gordon has been named the top 25 finalist for freshman of the year and was the national freshman of the week back on March 21st. Down one and two to Dubois. Well, Dubois is getting ahead of these hitters. She's got two strikes on almost every hitter so far, but she's allowing the ball to come back over the plate a little too far. Louisville is capitalizing, but they're being aggressive on strikes, and that, to me, is an important piece of the puzzle, knowing that Dubois has a really good changeup that they're going to have to deal with. Well, and when, when you've got a change-up pitcher who is trust that mix of speed, you have to be able to keep that bat back and foul pitches off. That was a change of speed, so she had to double clutch, but did a good job of fouling it off to keep the at-bat alive. 
Take it inside to fill up the count. And already Lonnie Alameda has McKenna Reed, the freshman, warming up in the bullpen for Florida State. Calls the pitches for this team. Now in her 15th year in Tallahassee. Here's the full count. Seventh pitch of the at bat results in a strikeout for Dubois. But Corby Otis with the leadoff single scores the first run of the game. Dubois able to get that nice pitch down and in for the swing and miss to get herself out of the inning. We're at Florida State. Big weekend, including uh, graduation ceremonies going on. And right now, Louisville has taken a 1 0 lead over Florida State as we head to the bottom of the first. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill. And this three game series meant so much to Louisville coming in. Had they swept it, they actually would have been regular season champs. Yeah, coming into the year, they were picked preseason number seven. So a great response to that original. But with the loss yesterday, it pulled them down into the third slot in the rankings in the ACC. However, if they lose again, they will fall below Clemson. So these next two games for Louisville have big ACC tournament repercussions. Yes, this is the final weekend of the regular season, believe it or not. Duke, Clemson, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, Notre Dame all have finished their ACC schedules. So if Louisville can come up with two wins, winning the last two games of this series, they will be in the third slot and avoid the potential semifinal matchup in the ACC tournament against Florida State. Kaylee Mudge leading things off for the Knowles. She has been on base in 22 straight games in Louisville going with Alyssa Zabala to start today. Well, Zabala is just a freshman, but is throwing with so much maturity and poise in the circle and has been able to come in and help Taylor Roby, the ace, the graduate student for Louisville in the circle. Head coach Holly April calls her Zaballer, likes her demeanor out there. As you look at her particulars. Well, and it's her 32nd appearance, and she has the most strikeouts in the circle for Louisville. But that one goes away and walks the first batter. Zabala will attack these hitters with a good curve, but relies on her screw and her rise primarily. She's working on a changeup. That will be an important pitch here today. But the success of that pitch will determine her longevity in the circle against Florida State. Here, Holly April with the ball cap on. Came to Louisville after some years at pitch and I Kerr goes after the first pitch she seizes she sees a Holly April ACC coach of the year in 2018 and you might recall that that was the season when Pitt led Florida State going into the seventh inning in the ACC championship game and postseason Anna did it to him again Anna Shelnut with the uh, walk-off home run and they were that close Pitt was to winning the uh, conference tournament and then the next year, Louisville snapped her up. Yeah, Holly April has been such a big get for Louisville to step in after a long tenured staff that had been there on campus for Louisville. That is sent the opposite way. Foul ball, Pickle Winkler chasing it down. Her leading this Florida State team in batting average. This is a club that leads the entire nation in doubles. They've hit 98 of them in 53 games. When Janai Kerr steps in, 19 hits in her last eight games. That one will not be a hit. Almost gets doubled off, but enough speed down the line to be able to get herself on base. That does extend her on-base streak to 14 games, but good de defense by Louisville reduces the threat. And File was coming in from first and couldn't get back in time, so Mudge is erased. Sends up Kaylee Harding to the plate. 
for the first time. There's a Zabala changeup. That pitch definitely going to be an important one, knowing that she's got to keep these hitters, especially ones like Kaylee Harding, from being able to dig in and tee off. Harding hitting just under 300 on the season with eight home runs. Yesterday's game three, Harding went 0 for 4. Again, Florida State won that 6 to 4 to clinch their eight, their uh, regular season championship. Pickle Winkler, we already saw her out in left field. Otis and Garrity from left to right. And a file to JMU transfer at first base. And Sarah Gordon, that you already mentioned, Jenny, she's a true freshman who is behind the plate, has been all year for Louisville. When Gordon back behind the plate has had to do so much with five different pitchers throwing for Louisville. She's had a lot of pitchers to get to know, but Griffin Joyner, the one in the background giving the pitch signs, the pitching coach for Louisville has been a catcher during her playing career. Harding beats it on the ground. They try to turn two and they do. A good infield defense. 6-4-3 double play ends the inning. The leadoff walk to Mudge does no damage. And they might be taking a look to make sure this was indeed a double play. Emerus Addison, Brad Newton, Craig Hyde, our, ref, our umpires today. Let's take a look. Well, and it comes down to this has to be looked at at the field by our umpiring crew, knowing that there is not centralized video replay. So these umpires out on the bases, Craig Hyde and Brad Newton, will head to the side to look at the monitors and look at these looks that we are looking at right now. It's going to be tough. We've got great looks by our camera crew. What you're looking for is does the foot hit the bag or touch the bag before file is able to secure the ball it's not just touching the glove it has to be secured in the glove to be recorded as an out that one's pretty bang bang play yeah, very close there over at first again it was called out So you're looking for the ball to be hidden by the glove. And look at that. The ball still outside the glove. The foot already touching the bag. That's a very good look by our crew to pull that, that look up to show you. But with the ball outside the glove, I think you will see this one reversed. And as you mentioned, there is not a centralized location. So the on-field umpires have to go over and look at video. It is not as quick as the SEC system, which does have. Yep, and that's the right call. Good job. So the inning goes on. Harding just beating it out. Well, and the purpose of replay is not to show up umpires. The purpose of replay is to make sure that the calls are made correctly. And I love that umpires after the sixth inning or after the fifth inning are able to go to replay on their own. Before that sixth inning hits, coaches have two challenges that they can use. That gives a chance now for Edenfield, who had a big two-run double yesterday. Just a sophomore, started every game last year as a freshman. Well, I like that they're staying away from Edenfield. Edenfield likes the ball up above the belt and likes it a little bit more inside. We have not seen her with a ton of power going the opposite way for the home run. Most of her home runs coming over the left field wall.
One, two now with Harding over at first. Edenfield hit on the nose, but right at the third baseman, Allie Alexander to end the first inning. It's one nothing cards. Allie April, she's happy to be in Florida. It's about uh, 84 degrees there right now. I mean, we've seen such different temperatures all across the ACC this year with parkas last weekend at Notre Dame and now shorts in Tallahassee this weekend. Yeah, Florida State was all bundled up when they played at South Bend last weekend. To the top of the second, Allie Dubois' first pitch to Daisy Hess. Louisville came in just scorching. They had won nine straight games, and during that stretch, Hess was 16 for 26. That's a cool 6-15. This nasty changeup is what Dubois loves to throw. Every batter will see it, so batters have a decision to make. Are they going to sit change or let it go by until they've got two strikes? Hess behind 0-2. Taps it to Harding, who couldn't handle it. Then it went out into short left field, but Hess is going to stay put over at first. Again, this Louisville Cardinal team was picked preseason to finish seventh. And they, as we mentioned, have that nine game win streak. Taylor Roby up at the top for home runs. And this is a team that had five sweeps during ACC series. 16 wins tied for the most in the history of this program. So quite a year for this team. Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Here's Hannah File. That, by the way, was ruled an error on Hartley, the third baseman. So an E5 puts Hess on first. In Florida State, known for their defense, but have been making some miscues. As of late, that defense getting a little bit shaky at times. And the conversation has to be had going back to the dugout, knowing that that changeup is going to come. Back in the back corner, you can see the assistant coach, Bryce Neal, who takes over the hitting responsibilities and the prep for this Louisville squad. They have to figure out, are they going to hit the change before two strikes, or are they going to let it go and wait until they've got two strikes to attack that change of speed? Here's another one. Dubois relies on it. You know that you are going to see it in every at bat and most likely multiple times unless you hit early in the count. But look at that. It spins so tight that it disrupts the eye and fools you into thinking that it's coming in fast. Dubois so good at getting that change up down in the zone. It's a devastating pitch for a hitter. That's hit over to Muffley. They get the lead runner. Can't turn two. And Lonnie, as we take a look again at the, uh, the play by Muffley. And Muffley, defensive specialist over there at shortstop, has to take a step back because she was in between hops because of that extra step back. Not enough time to turn the double play. And Muffley's been solid over there at short. Here is Allie Alexander. Over for two last night in the opener of this game. Edenfield shows off her arm, and it's just grabbed out there. Well, and that's a tough one for a second baseman coming in because they've got to sneak behind the runner. But when you've got aggression on the bases, File loves to take an additional 60 feet if it's given to her. Good athletic play by Flaherty to be able to come away with that throw. Your File has not stolen a base yet. But yeah, you're right. Flaherty really had to get on her horse to get over there and save the ball. 
And that is a single into left field for Alexander. So a couple of base runners on with just one away. Well, and Alexander did not have a hit in the first game yesterday, but this one finds its way just inside that left field line. There's nothing much can do it with it other than get it back in. So two, on, two on for Pickle Winkler. Freshman from Crofton, Kentucky. Real first name is Madison, but one of the best, certainly, nicknames that we've seen this year. Had a hit yesterday. Got a hold of that one. Sends it into right field. Wade Kaser makes the play, and the runners have to stay put. Well, and the decision these hitters have to make is how aggressive are they going to be early on in a count. If I'm going in to face Dubois and I am digging into the batter's box, I want to hit early and I want to hit something with velocity. She's throwing it in the mid-60s. And as soon as you see that change of speed, you're in trouble. So hit early in a count before she goes to the changeup. These Louisville hitters oh, yeah. are not being aggressive early in the count. Only one player has swung at the first pitch. And so, so far, Louisville not trans, not changing their game plan with Dubois in the circle. And yeah, she certainly gives them a very different look from what they saw last night from Sandercock and Reed. And Paige Garrity do up, but Maddie Grant pinch hits for her. And what would have been Garrity's first at bat of the game. Edenfield, good job to keep it in front of her. Well, and with file on second base, as soon as that ball's coming in with less velocity, I would want to make sure that I get an extra step. And as soon as I see it's going to bounce in front of Edenfield, I'm going. File saw that but that hesitation requires her to stay because she probably would have been hung out to dry had she tried to advance after the hesitation. Now the 1-0 to Grant. And the field again, but this time File takes off and she slides in safely. Yeah, File got another opportunity to go. That right there is good base running. See, recognizing a ball down, taking an extra step. As soon as it kicks off of Edenfield, she goes. Good dirt ball read by File, takes advantage, and now Louisville 60 feet away from pushing another run across. That's the kind of aggression you need to have if you want to win ball games. And Alexander took off from first, and she's into second safely. A two on them, 2 0 on the way to Grant. Just the 17th at bat of the season for Grant. Three for 16 previously. A big situation. A 3 1 pitch on the way at the top of the lineup, and Corby Otis on deck. Goes full now. When Grant has a little bit more pop in her back, Garrity at the bottom of the lineup, more speed, not a lot of power, no home runs. And while, Gar while Grant does not have a home run on the season, just a little bit more pop in the bat. So that's why you see her coming in to pinch hit first time through the lineup. Big pitch.
Sent into left field. It drops in Louisville. Plates two on the huge pinch hit single by Grant. Great move by Holly April to recognize an opportunity to help Louisville out. Some speed on the bases. Both File and Alexander able to come around on that one. And look at this. It's just a gap shot. Mudge able to track it down, but too much speed on the bases. Louisville capitalizes. Great at bat by Grant. And look at the way that File is fired up. So McKenna Reed, the freshman, is going to come in to relieve Dubois after Louisville has put up three runs on her. Starter Ali Dubois lasted one and two-third innings, so enter freshman McKenna Reed. McKenna Reed came in yesterday and threw an inning and two-thirds of relief. This is her 34th appearance on the season. Really good walk to strikeout ratio. A lot of that due to her great rise. She's got good velo from the left side. Pretty good jump on that rise ball. We'll run it up and in on, on the hands of the righties. Coach Alameda would really like to see her develop that repertoire, get a little bit more pitches to, to choose from. But as a freshman, she doesn't want to push her and really relies on that rise this season to go after batters. Yeah, Reed came in, pitched an inning and two thirds in last night's first game of the series. Uncharacteristically wild, walked the bases loaded, gave up her an earned run, and then uh, Sandercock had to come in and strike out Roby to save the game. But McKenna Reed, the true freshman from Portland, Oregon, has given up only two earned runs in 30 innings of work in ACC games. Monty Alameda said had to use her maybe a little bit more than she had planned. Mac Leonard, who is over at first base, uh, also a, a pitcher, but has been dealing with some back issues that seem to affect her pitching more so than her hitting. There's Mac playing over at first. So McKenna Reed has taken full advantage of the extra innings and is 11-0 on the season. She has not lost a game yet. And she does such a good sorry Pam she does such a good job of just filling the zone and she comes in with a lot more velocity than what you saw Dubois with so second time through the lineup Louisville's gonna have to make an adjustment to more velocity out of the circle I would say it's not too difficult to have more velocity than what we saw from Dubois head coach uh, Lonnie Alameda calls that her EFIS pitch says sometimes it goes in, in there and it's uh, in the 40 mile an hour range and already Louisville come in clutch after just one hit with runners in scoring position and last night's loss. Otis down 0-2. Sends it into right field where it's unplayable. Well, and you can tell that tardy bell was ringing on that one. She was way <laughs> late through the zone. And the adjustment you have to make as a hitter when you see a change of velocity into the circle, when something's coming harder at you, you've got to get that stride foot down or get to toe touch earlier. Corby Otis sitting at the top of the lineup for Louisville. So good at the top. Leading this team in batting average this season. Well, she's reached base in all but three games this season. She's so good at just putting the ball in play, using her wheels. She's got seven triples on the year. Most triples in the ACC. Now the 0-2. Oh. Edenfield couldn't grab it. And Garrity goes down to second. Well, what do you get with a rise ball pitcher? Sometimes the ball gets up and away, and that's what happened there. That, that ball was too high for Edfield to grab a hold of. And remember, Edfield back behind the plate has to manage a ton of different pitchers. Florida State has thrown six different pitchers this season. Leonard ends it, but a big pinch hit for Maddie Grant. 
Grant comes away with a big one, punches in the outfield. Louisville uses their speed to get two more across, and now they're up 3-0. It really was a stunning ending to what had been a great season for Florida State. They had only lost five games all year heading into the regional. And as you mentioned, the number two overall seed behind only Oklahoma, who became the national champions. Clemson right behind them. And really a very disappointing postseason for the ACC last year. Such high hopes heading in with teams like Clemson, Duke, certainly Florida State. and. None of them made it to the World Series. Yeah, it was projected that three ACC teams were going to make it to the Women's College World Series, the way that Virginia Tech had been playing, Duke, Clemson, and Florida State. Everyone thought three of those four would advance, and sadly, no ACC team able to play in Oklahoma City last year. Matt Leonard. At bat, yes, in fact, Virginia Tech was the only ACC team to even make it to a Super Regional where they lost to Florida. Again, won the first game of that, then lost the last two. See a little frustration from Lonnie Alameda over in the uh, dugout. And that's some hard lessons for this Florida State team that is a World Series contender every single season. And they couldn't even get out of the regionals last year. As you mentioned, first time in 10 years, 2012, the last time they did not make it to a Super Regional. That's hit and grabbed beautifully by Daisy Hess to Rob Leonard of a hit. One. To be able to respond to that, it, Lonnie Alameda had a tough conversation with her team at the beginning of the year. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize, like, you start in September and you're on this mission, and it's a lot of months, like, put in emotion, physical strain, all those things into an opportunity, and then all of a sudden it's like, one day, done, and everyone's like, bye bye for summer. And so we had to really unlock and talk for a couple weeks about what it was like, let the freshmen into the pain, you know? Um, I know that trauma is deep-rooted in a lot of things, but in sports, that's trauma, right? In sports, that's trauma. So we had to really talk about it. So we had a really good two-week debrief. We watched video. We went through scenarios. We went through what was so fun about the season, incredible season, what we could have done better in that moment. Not that we're going to be guaranteed that in regionals this next time around, but can we address it, you know? Can we be more present? Uh, can we be more vulnerable? Um, all those things. And so, um, so I thought it was really healthy for us and how we handled that. And I'm really excited what I'm seeing right now as we move forward. Yeah, to have those difficult conversations, Lonnie Alameda knew that they would need to have those and bring them out in the open to dissect what happened at the end of the year. They talked about how those losses to Mississippi State happened in one day, and those back-to-back -back losses ended their season. So one bad day derailed an entire season of work, and they are excited this year to come back with a more resilient mindset to keep fighting and advance further than they did a season ago. A lot expected of this team. There's a 2-2 now to Waycaser, who fouled it straight back. And Florida State season, you, you look at their record, 45 and 8, just two losses in the ACC. And th they're doing it in impressive ways. But the thing that really is eye-popping is the, the series wins they have had on the road. Their schedule was on paper not favorable because they had to go on the road to Duke, Clemson, Virginia Tech, and Notre Dame. And they won all of those series. And the only loss in those series that I mentioned, just once to Duke, and the other loss in the conference was to Virginia. That's it. Waycaser skies it. Love by Garrity. They have been tested on the road and have been road warriors all season long. Clarity bats for the first time, and you would think that that would give them certainly great confidence knowing they can go on the road to beat really good teams and again beat them handily. Just Duke and Virginia, the only teams to even win a single game, much less a series against Florida State this year in the ACC. And Florida State also did something. They played three games at Oklahoma State 
in March. That's another toughie. They only took one of those games and then they went to Oklahoma where they lost. But what a challenging schedule and they have been up to the task. Well, Lonnie Alameda is referred to as Coacha by everyone who knows and loves her. And Coacha put together a schedule that has tested this Florida State squad. She did not want it to be an easy season. She wanted to make sure that this squad was able to not just win on the road, but be able to come away with tough games. And Flaherty with a great at bat just flares one over into left field. And that's the Florida State specialty, their 99th double as a team this year. I'll tell you what, not only does Florida State love to just put the ball in play, but gosh, they can nip corners like nobody's business. Kicks up enough of that white that their Flaherty is able to use her speed. Huge double, and now just one double away from that century mark on the season for Florida State. That leads the entire country. Flaherty's 10th of the year. Two out base runner for Hartley. Christina Hartley, the sophomore, getting a start over at third today. Yeah, you still see Lonnie Alameda messing with her lineup and changing people around. Typically, you see Kaylee Harding over there at third base, but Hartley taking the nod today over there on the hot corner. Harding today DPing for Florida State. Muffley got a day off during the midweek, which is unusual. Well, remember, the all of these athletes are in the middle of their finals, and so they've got a lot on their plates right now. That's the stretch run. Again, this is the final regular season weekend. ACC championship tournament begins Wednesday in South Bend. Florida State is your number one seed. Louisville will be either the third or the fourth. And that is the first strikeout for Zabala. Gets Hartley looking and strands Flaherty. Hartley may not be seasoned, but she's going to need to get up the bat off her shoulder to be able to help Florida State. Louisville's on top 3-0, but how did we get there? It was a crazy play, a first and third. Florida State runs it correctly, but then with the toss over to Mac Leonard, it allows Louisville to squeak a run across. Then in the second inning, Louisville able to get a couple more off of a big hit by Grant. The bottom of the lineup, a pinch hit that was able to plate two. Hannah File, Ali Alexander coming across to plate two more for Louisville, and now 3 0 advantage by Louisville. And two of those runs are unearned because uh, in that second inning there was an error, also a couple of wild pitches, and you see that Louisville so far has been delivering in this game with runners on base. Cardinals dropping last night's game one, and they need to win a couple to get the number three seed in the ACC championship or else Clemson will get it. Florida State and Duke won two seeds when we all head to South Bend. Top of the third inning, McKenna Reed relieved starter Ali Dubois. Got the last out of the second inning. That's Easton Lotus. She was the one who had an infield single and was caught up in that crazy rundown. Playing in, Hartley able to make the play for the first out of the third inning. <laughs> ACC Softball Championship cannot wait. It's Wednesday afternoon, hosted by Notre Dame. We'll have both Wednesday first round games at 1 and 3.30 Eastern, respectively, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Top 10 teams get in to the tournament. And the top six don't have to play on day one, which is another big goal. 
Pam, does that mean we are top six? Because we will be covering <laughs> a lot of that tournament. Just we will be coming in on the night side on Thursday. Taylor Roby got all of it as Janai Kerr did a backward roll trying to get to the ball. It didn't matter anyway because the ball cleared the fence, but that might, uh, they might not let her forget that for a while. But Taylor Roby now with 22 home runs on the year that leads the country. Yeah, out there in center, Janai Kerr definitely wants that one back. She tripped as she tried to retreat. This ball was a no-doubter. Absolutely charged off the bat. And with that long ball, <laughs> the backward roll, Kerr knows that that one's going to be on a couple highlight reels. Taylor Roby now takes the top spot in the country with 22 home runs. Kerr had a good laugh about it with Kaylee Mudge, who came over from left field. Good to see that she is okay. Nothing bruised except maybe her ego. <laughs> Style points in the effort to get to the ball, but 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 as you mentioned, it was a no doubter. That puppy was leaving the park, and she now has the most home runs in the nation. Well, and Pam, Tearing. with that home run, they've now matched last season's total. 56 home runs a season ago. Now the number 56 leaving the park, and Louisville has scored in every inning here in Tallahassee today. And Taryn Kern of Indiana with 21 home runs. Heading into play today, Sarah Gordon struck out against the starter Dubois in the first inning. Well, it's such an important piece of the puzzle to find a hitter that can hit behind a Taylor Roby in your lineup. And they found that in the young freshman, Sarah Gordon, who has put up a bunch of long ball this year as well. Strikes out for the second time today. That's the first strikeout for Reed. Well, and what an important pitch. That rise ball is so good, and she's able to climb the ladder with it. Took a little something off that pitch. Gordon, good swing and miss, but that ball up in the zone is definitely the bread and butter of Reed in the circle. She's got that, that rise ball, and the drop ball is what Kat Sandercock is known for. Expect her to start tomorrow's game three. Here's Daisy Hess reached on an error her first time up. Well, and Pam, that's actually a really unique discussion talking about Kat Sandercock, knowing that Coach Lonnie Alameda for Florida State has used each of her pitchers in multiple ways this season, starters, relievers, and closers. So Kat Sandercock actually could come in to close this one tonight. Yeah, that is interesting, as you mentioned, that she's much more of a pitching staff now for this team and she loves Sandra Cock to come in and get the last out there is cat there on the right did that last night number Taylor Roby was up two outs bases loaded and Sandra Cock struck her out to end the game yeah Sandra Cock had the game start through four plus innings and then came back in at the end of the game after Reed had relieved her. Sandra Cock re-entered the game to face Roby and got the huge strikeout to end the game. And so the mindset of this young woman has absolutely matured and grown so much under the tutelage of Lonnie Alameda. Alameda knew that she would need a staff that could come in in multiple different ways this year, and so she has trained them to each be a starter, a reliever, and a closer, top to bottom, all six. Yeah, all that versatility certainly is going to help in the long run. Here's a 3-1 pitch now to Hess. Fists it to Leonard to end the inning, but Taylor Roby doing Taylor Roby things for the Cardinals. Huge hit. Not only does it put Taylor Roby at the top of the home run leaderboard, but it also gives Louisville a 4 nothing advantage. Being commemorated with their little uh, banners on this nice sunny day in Tallahassee. But yeah, a lot going on. You're right, Jenny. You've got final exams. You have 
senior weekend, the emotions that go along with that, and uh, getting ready for the ACC tournament. But Florida State at least now can breathe a little bit easier as that bunt was laid down by Muffley to get things started in the third. Well, Muffley is not known for her offensive prowess. So here just puts the ball in play and takes advantage of a defensive miscue by Louisville. Pushes it to the right side. Zabala picks it up. It gets away from Lotus over there. But because of the backup out there and right by Garrity, it prevents an advancement by Muffley. But there, Muffley doing Muffley things and puts herself on for the top of the lineup. which is Mudge and Josie Muffley. When we talked to uh, Lonnie Alameda about Josie, she said, yeah, that, that Josie likes her time away from the field and the, the main reason is this guy, Ruger, her dog, who they kind of hang out together and kind of gets her centered and chilled and he, he's uh, ready for graduation weekend as well. That's right. Well, and when you think about the life of a student athlete, it is so hard to be able to manage so many different things. But Ruger's been Muffley's companion as she has navigated adjusting to not just D1 softball, but all of the pressures that go into being a student athlete. Sent down the left field line by Mudge. An error has been charged to Zabala, the throwing error that allowed Muffley to get over to first on the bunt attempt. When well, Pam, that's the piece of the game that I need Louisville to shore up heading into the ACC tournament and with the anticipated postseason bid. They had three errors last night. Zabala coming back with the strikeout of Mudge. And that's a big strikeout. To get Mudge out, it keeps speed off the bases. Zavala able to extend off the plate as she sat ahead in that count. Good job of throwing it off the plate and getting the swing and miss. You see kind of a smile from Zavala, who again is a true freshman from Miami. And head coach Holly April as Kerr comes up, really a has been impressed with Zabal, the way she handles herself, especially as a true freshman. A lot of confidence, very coachable. Yeah, nicknamed her Zabaler in the circle, knowing that she really just loves the big moment, stays calm in pressure-filled situations, and right now is attacking Florida State on the outside part of the plate. Kerr sends one that's gonna go all the way to the wall. Muffley, who runs well, scores all the way from first. Florida State getting on the board. Well, and how does Florida State get on the board? Oh yeah, another double. That's now 100 doubles on the season for Florida State. And she does it with speed on first base. Muffley able to score all the way from first. But look at how hard she takes off. She knows that with this ball in the gap, she's got an opportunity to score. A little trip around second base, but there is no hesitation as she goes all the way home. And Kerr racks up another double for Florida State. And even 100 now. Kaylee Harding, first pitch swinging. And the aggressive tag by Kerr to get into third base. Now we talked about this last week. Some coaches, when they when you ask them about Florida State, they talk about the chaos they create and having to, to live with it. And this is uh, not your typical move on a sack fly. It's, well, and it's, it's not a sack fly with no one scoring. So this ball to the outfield is one that typically a runner at second base is gonna just watch come into the glove and retreat back to second. But with the speed of Kerr, she puts herself now on third base with an aggressive move coming in with that ball to center field. And that sets up Edenfield now with two away. Also going after the first pitch that she saw. She lined out to Alexander at third her first time up. And you mentioned the average down from last year, but still 49 runs driven in 
leads the team. And she had a big hit last night that naturally was a double for this, for this club. Yeah, they certainly needed those runs after Louisville came back to make it a two-run ball game and left the bases loaded in this top of the seventh inning. But Florida State winning that game and clinching the regular season championship in the top seed in the ACC tournament. Well, and Edenfield's power numbers are down this year. She's got 10 home runs on the season, which is double digits, but had 16 on the year last season. So when it comes to being able to hit the long ball here at home, she has been given the nickname Area 51 for that spot out there and left where she likes to hit it. Scooped up by Hess, who gets Edenfield, but the RBI double by Kerr gets Florida State on the board. When we come back, it's Holly April. Back in Tallahassee, where we are joined now by Louisville head coach Holly April. Tough loss last night, but off to a good start today. Are you happy with the response so far? Yeah, I'm happy with our response. I thought we played hard last night. Uh, we made too many mistakes, but we talked about some of the things we needed to do to clean it up. We have a good approach at the plate, and we're just trying to attack. Well, and you definitely are. You've scored in every inning so far. I'm not trying to jinx it by any means, but when it comes to that approach at the plate, what is the change that you've seen in your team from last night to today? Well, I don't believe in the jinx, so that's okay. <laughs> and uh, the change in the approach, you know, I don't think too much. I think, you know, they're really good. So we got to keep adapting and adjusting, but, um, you know, it's not like it's being thumbed up there for us. So we're just, we're just, you know, trying to do our best and keep uh, adjusting. So. All, right. All right, Coach. Thank you so much for All your right. time as Thank always. You. Thank you. Holly April, one of the, one of the, the most interesting people I think to talk to. I know she was a former teammate of yours. Very hard nosed, very serious as a player, and has a, quite a quite an approach too as a head coach. Well, and my favorite thing is getting that smirk out of her. I know she doesn't believe in jinxes. I know she doesn't believe in luck. And actually, the word happy is something that she yes. doesn't use a whole lot. So not only did we get her to talk about all three of those things, but I think this Louisville approach here today has not only made her happy, but it has put them up on top. Yes, we will find out later if she was happy with those questions. But right now, <laughs> her team is leading Florida State 4-1. to one. Again, still a lot to play for. If they can beat them today and tomorrow, they will nail down the three seed over Clemson for the championship coming up next week in South Bend. Well, and that's the crazy thing about this series this weekend, Pam, is that Louisville came in as the number two seed and with one loss fell all the way to three and with another one could fall to four. Reed in the circle facing Hannah File. Well, and as Reed continues to climb the ladder with the rise ball, you know that, that she's just going to keep going higher and higher against File, who has shown great aggression on the ball up in the zone. File, a very good hitter, a good pickup for Louisville coming in as that transfer from JMU. Has had some injuries the last couple of years. And in fact, in the very first game this year, was run into a, by a base runner and Broke her nose, had a slice on her face, got a concussion, but has come back from that. But she went down swinging this time against Reed. A couple of good baseball games coming up next on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And Friday night, A12 at 6 Eastern time, it's NC State, North Carolina. And then Louisville, Virginia next Saturday afternoon. And game two of their three-game series. Again, that's all coming up next weekend as ACC baseball continues. Next weekend is ACC softball tournament time. And we will have all the games for you, either on the ACC Network or ESPN2. And we will be live and in person in South Bend. Allie Alexander. Singled and scored 
back in the second inning. And we have more softball coming your way, coming up on the ACC Network, NC State and Pitt. They're gonna play a doubleheader today with some uh, weather expected in Pittsburgh tomorrow. So we'll have that first game for you coming up. And we are finished here. Well, and Pam, when I saw that we were gonna talk about Louisville and Virginia baseball, I looked up the stats for both of those squads and Louisville baseball has 50 team home runs. Ryan McCoy leading them with 11. I'm gonna say that softball gains the advantage with more home runs and Taylor <laughs> Roby almost doubling that number. No, now she's now that. doubled it, right? With 22. Ball on the ground, Flaherty throws out Alexander. Louisville has had base runners. and has scored at least one run in the first three innings of this game. And now Pickle Winkler. Flew out her first time up and again a terrific nickname and Coach April said that uh, when she was born there was an issue and she her, her coloring was a bit off, kind of green and purple and her dad said that she looked like a pickle when uh, they were holding her in the, when she was swaddled up in her blanket and the nickname has stuck ever since and I think we're thrilled that it has. Well, she actually broke her clavicle during birth and so she, her coloring was off and her dad said when they swaddled her, it looked like she was a swaddled little pickle and that's <laughs> where the name comes from. Given name is Madison. <laughs> Snared by Leonard who takes care of it herself. First time that Florida State has retired Louisville in order. When we come back, Alana. Alana. Welcome back, Louisville on top of Florida State, four to one, joined now by Lonnie Alameda, the head coach for the Seminoles. First off, coach, congratulations. Another win uh, last night uh, gives you the ACC regular season championship. So what more are you playing for this weekend? Um, my gosh, like a series win. Uh, it's a great ball club. Um, you know, RPI, like uh, we want the opportunity to be here and play here. So, I mean, it's everything, you know finishing out the, the weekend strong. And um, this is a really good challenging offense for us as a pitching staff and being able to make some adjustments. So, you know, got to keep your, your tools sharp. But uh, awesome yesterday, really fun. Um, you know, super cool when you have the consistency of a regular season championship. And I know the tournaments are always really celebrated and people are excited, but you know, for um, getting after it week in and week out and doing some things, it's, it's super cool. Well, and you guys have been road warriors this year with a ton of huge wins on the road this year. That conversation coming into the season after a tough 2022, this team has really risen to that challenge. Where do you see that resilience paying off? Um, I just, you know, you, as a coach and I think as a team, you try to figure out who you are, but you've got to go through the season, you know? So February is fun. You get playing in, in March and April. You try to figure out really who you are. And so that's when the consistency starts to show up. So, um, you know, uh, it's a very chill team, <laughs> you know, we're uh, <laughs> starting to understand that, you know, and uh, it is their team. It's, you know, it's our program as a coaching staff, but it's their team. And, you know, they've got to own their team and what they do. And so um, being in front of this crowd is incredible. It's like family to us. But um, we've had a lot of people travel with us on the road, too. So it doesn't really matter home or away. We've enjoyed both and we've been pretty consistent in both. And so very proud of the team to, to figure that piece out and be about them on the dirt right now. OK, great, Lonnie. Thank you so much for your time. And Thank yes, you they do have a great <laughs> fan base there. There's always overflow people into the parking garage. And Lonnie Alameda is a Hall of Famer. She is part of the 2023 class for the NFC. CA Hall of Fame, the induction coming on December 8th. And among those going in, our colleague, Carol Brugman, who will be calling the game after us with Jen Hildreth. So congratulations to the class of 2023. And you just saw one of them in Lonnie Alameda, who's done such a terrific job with this Florida State team and trying to get rid of the sting last year of not even making it to the Super Regional. So just a lot on their plate as they progress. And right now they're down four to one. And Lonnie mentioned it. This is a really good Louisville team. And the expectations as Mac Leonard comes up. So team picked Louisville to come in seventh during the regular season. And until yesterday, they had a chance to be the regular season champs. It's been quite a year for them. 
file retires Leonard to start the fourth. Well, and for Louisville, when we talked to Coach Holly April about her squad, she said this team has just clicked. They are defensively solid. They're communicating better. They're getting better at game planning. The coaches are vibing better. The players are able to communicate about difficult topics and come back stronger the next day. Ray Kaser flies out to Garrity. Well, to have a team click this late in the season is exactly what you want. While it's fun to start hot, it's a whole lot better to hit that streak down the stretch to be able to give yourself an opportunity to make it to the postseason. And with Louisville sitting at 33 in the RPI, it looks as though they're going to have a really good chance if they do not win the ACC tournament to be able to grab an at-large bid. And that is looking very, very likely for them. Devin Clarity doubled her last time up against Zabala, the freshman who has done a good job. Florida State, just one run on two hits in this game. And Coach April said she would be very comfortable if the RPI was closer into the 20s. But she is also one of these people, probably no surprise, that just wants to focus on what they can control, what's ahead of them. And for her, that is trying to win as many games as possible against Florida State. Therefore, your RPI goes up. Things like that can take care of themselves. Yeah, she says she doesn't want to leave doubt in the committee's eyes, and sitting in the 30s doesn't make her comfortable. She would rather be sitting in the 20s with that RPI. She's aware of the numbers that they have during the season, but she really doesn't focus on them, knowing that the purpose needs to be winning ball games and not worrying about where the numbers fall in RPI, but as she looks at it at the end of the season, she definitely doesn't sleep comfortably knowing that there's <laughs> always that chance that the committee might leave them out. Louisville has been to 14 NCAA tournaments. Most recently in 2021 when they lost in the Evanston Regional Final. Trying to get back into the tournament this year and their resume. Impressive so far, and that's an impressive inning for Zabala. Just 10 pitches to retire the side as we head to the fifth. Yeah, Devin Boland was hired as the director of ops in 2021. He is leading the program, and Carson Shaner, who played last season for NC State, is taking over as an assistant coach. Pop up, handled, first pitch of the fifth inning. Gets Garrity as Hartley comes in on the bunt attempt. On well, defensively over on third base, your job when you see the hands come forward is to charge hard. So with Hartley coming forward, that's an easy grab. Hartley getting the nod over there at third today. Now at the top of the order in Corby Otis, who has one hit today. McKenna Reed still in the circle, came in in the Second inning to get the final out there to relieve Ali Dubois. And such a good response by McKenna Reed after that home run that she gave up to Taylor Roby. She has retired eight of nine batters. So coming in and absolutely filling the zone, getting the swing and the miss with that rise ball up in the zone. Popped up, called by Flaherty for the second out. She's not allowed a base runner since giving up that home run to Roby in the third inning. Yeah, forgive me, Pam. I was reading off the wrong stats. McKenna Reed has done so good. She hasn't given up any hits coming in after that home run that she gave up to Taylor Roby. 
So a couple of very quick outs brings Lotus to the plate. Swinging at the first pitch. Lotus is sophomore. He started every game at second base last year and then 23 games in. Had a season ending knee injury, has been fighting her way back. And quite nicely as she is just south of hitting 300 on the season. Sends that into left field. Nice run and catch by Mudge. And that is a six pitch inning for Reed. The Florida State's down three. Seven innings weekly softball podcast with ESPN personalities like Jenny Dalton Hill covering the sport all the way to Oklahoma City. And uh, this week there you see the topics including an interview with the one and only Jocelyn Allo who set the all time home run record with Oklahoma. What else what else was good on that show other than your hair. Well I think uh, when it comes to what the world needs to know is they need to know that Pam actually bought a Jocelyn Allo t-shirt oh, last year when goodness. we covered the Super Regionals. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would I do that? Because she was awesome. Here is uh, the uh, bottom of the fifth inning and Hartley leading things off and like a geek had her sign it. <laughs> it's and hanging take a picture up in my with office. her, just say it. <laughs> yeah. What a player she was and a sweetheart of a kid. Could hit the ball a lot. And far. And right now, well, Florida State down to Louisville. Good job by Zabala in the circle holding this potent offense in check. Yeah, I love this freshman in the circle circle for Louisville, giving Taylor Roby the ace for the last couple of years. So much needed help. I mean, right here, rolling through these Florida State hitters, a nice one, two, three inning, last inning, and they're able to rack up her third strikeout of the game. But look at this, extending the ball off the plate. No way Hart Flaherty can hold. No way Hartley was able to hold up. Really good job by the freshman in the circle to just go right at these dominant Florida State hitters. Second time that she has struck out Hartley. Now here's Josie Muffley, who scored the only run of the game for Florida State. It was on Kerr's RBI double back in the third inning. Just two hits for the Seminoles in this game. Head coach Holly April talked about how much she enjoyed. I don't know, again, I don't want to put words in her mouth. I don't know if enjoyed it would be a word that <laughs> she would use, but it's like the process of working with someone like Zabala. So, as you mentioned, it, she's handling the pressure of being a number one pitcher on this team as a true freshman with Taylor Roby on the staff and has certainly taken a lot of the, a lot of the pressure and a lot of the load off the shoulders of Roby. And she's just in, she's in there like smiling between pitches. She's having fun. Well, and when she stepped into the circle for the first time this year, she threw a complete game against Missouri. So from the very first time she towed the rubber for Louisville, she has been such a needed asset, knowing that Taylor Roby was going to need some help this season. And set into center field playable for Otis for the second out. But Zabala, as a freshman, has come away with her 85th strikeout here today. She's grabbed three of them, and she's been extending off the plate. Florida State continues to swing in the miss as she gets ahead in the count. She's used the screw. She's used the curve. Really good command of the zone, and as she gets ahead, she exploits these Seminoles. You see her leading her team in so many categories as a freshman starter. A complete game shutout in her very first weekend against Missouri and has been rolling ever since. Mudge grounds out to end the inning. Taylor Roby is about to lead off here in the sixth inning. Her last at bat in the third inning left the building. 
Yeah, it was a solo shot, but it was a no-doubter. And check out Janai Kerr with the backward roll. Not only was that a no-doubter, but Kerr, a little embarrassed by that one. Louisville has come out swinging. Huge game for Louisville, knowing that their back's against the wall, trying to grab the seeding position in the ACC tournament. But not only does Taylor Roby own the career home run record at Louisville, but she also leads the country with 22 home runs as she has now hit one more than the freshman at Indiana. Taryn Kern still sits at one. Yep, hit her 22nd earlier today. And Another change, our third pitcher of the day for Florida State, it's Mac Leonard. Comes over from playing first base. Well, Mac Leonard coming in, we've seen some more time for her in the circle. As of late, she had been battling some back issues throughout the year. So now as those are healing up and she's getting stronger, we're seeing her utilized more in the circle by head coach Lali Lonnie Alameda. Mac Leonard got the start during a big midweek win against Florida. They have now beaten Florida five straight times and Leonard is a transfer herself. She was terrific at Illinois State. And then last year, her first year at Florida State, all she was was first team all conference at 375 to lead the way. So a seamless transition. And Taylor Roby's dad, that's Eric. Watching in the stands. <laughs> With that no. last call. No. Family from Kentucky, not Washington. Roby had to extend the zone a little bit, lifts one into right field where Waycaser gets the first out of the sixth. Well, that's the hard part about the outside part of the zone. We've seen multiple pitchers use that outside corner to the right-handed batter and Mac Leonard doing more of the same as Florida State has gotten ahead in these counts against the Cardinal hitters. They continue to use that not even the corner, they are throwing off the plate and Florida State, or and Louisville has to respond by trying to protect. And here now is Sarah Gordon who struck out twice. One pitch thrown out by Muffley and with Mac Leonard now pitching the new first baseman, Bethany Keene over there for the Seminoles. Keen, a transfer from South Florida. A couple of quick outs for Mac Leonard. And here comes Daisy Hess. And you're right, Jenny, it's a good sign for Florida State that they're able to use Leonard more in the circle. Gosh, they have so many quality arms. We've seen three of them today. Dubois with the, uh, the very infamous Ephus pitch, that changeup that she uses. And then you got McKenna Reed, the true freshman, Leonard, and oh yeah, Kat Sandercock. Not bad. Yeah, I would expect to see Sandercock at some point tomorrow. If she doesn't start, I would expect her in relief, if not in a closing role. Mac Leonard coming in. Her longest time in the circle this year was four innings against UCLA, but here just needs to grab two innings to finish this one out. But Florida State needs to find their bats. They have been pretty quiet here in this one with Alyssa Zabala for Louisville. She has kept them from putting too many runners in scoring position and Louisville has been aggressive early in this game, coming away with a bunch of runs early, but has been quieted the last couple of innings. All four runs coming in the first three, but then Reed came in and shut him down. That's picked off by Hartley, a nine pitch inning for Leonard. But you're right, let's see if Florida State can get their bats going as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Starting on Wednesday, Jen Hildreth and Carol Bruggeman standing by to call that game for you. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill here in Tallahassee, second of a three game set. Florida State won last night against Louisville, so they are the regular season champs again, but their first one since 2019. Remember, we had COVID in 2020, so there wasn't a champ, and you had you know Duke and Clemson coming in. 
Here's Kerr who sends one to the wall. She will get into second and not satisfied, go to third after the bobble in the outfield. Every coach in the ACC talks about how Florida State creates chaos with their base running. And here, look at the wheels of Harding. As this ball gets to the fence, I thought it was she was going to be satisfied with a stand-up double. But no, the miscue out there at the wall allows Harding to get all the way to third. Florida State putting the pressure on. That is the first hit by either team since the third inning. So Kaylee Great Harding coming Kerr. up. Yep. As you knew, Harding was looming. Kerr, her second double of the game, double 101 for Florida State. That does lead the country. And now Harding comes up to try to get her in. But Florida State has not had a lot of timely hitting. Haven't had a lot of runners on base because the ball has been pitching so well, but they have left three. So the double to Kerr advancing on the error by Pickle. Winkler out in left field. Yeah, this Florida State team just so much speed on the bases. And when there's speed, it disrupts a defense knowing that there's pressure. And as a defender, you sometimes rush your advancement to a ball or rush your transition. And in rushing those moves, sometimes it gives you a miscue in the glove or in your feet. And Florida State takes advantage. Florida State has three hits today. As that goes out of play, all three hits are doubles. When with a 4-1 lead, the defense for Louisville is not playing shallow. They are going to go ahead and give way for Kerr if she'd like to score. They're going to trade it out for a run at this point, knowing that that's not too much damage. You don't want to get wrapped up in a play at home if you can get an out. 1-2, Harding reaches out. That will get the run home. Wide throw, pulls, file off the bag, so Harding is safe. And this is the kind of pressure that Florida State thrives on. It was not a ball that was squared up by Harding. It's almost a nubber over there to second, but she sees how fast Harding's getting down the line, rushes her throw, and it goes wide. File able to get the ball and protect it from getting to the screen. So it keeps any advancement away from Florida State, but they play a run and get a runner at first. So back-to-back -back errors now against Louisville. Florida State cutting the lead in half now and still nobody out. Well, this With is the part Edenfield of the field coming up. Sorry, Pam, this is the part of the game that Holly April said they needed to shore up was that defensive set. They had three errors in yesterday's game and three errors now here today. So Zavala pitching well. Defense let her down the last couple of plays. We'll have a pitching change when we come back to Florida State. Florida State now putting on a bit of a rally. One run in, a runner on. And so Holly April has pulled the starter Zavala in favor of Taylor Roby. Well, and she goes with her ace in the circle, knowing that she needs some calm presence after that error and that run. Taylor Roby, good velocity, attacks both sides of the plate, uses all four quadrants, uses spin and movement, but will fill the whole zone with command. And now Edenfield steps to the plate, a very dangerous hitter. Had a big hit last night to play insurance runs and Florida State's win over Louisville. Harding sends it into short center and it plops right in front of Otis. Harding into second, still with nobody out. And those hits feel terrible off the bat, but they get the job done. 
Ro Roby able to jam up Enfield, but she is so strong. She's able to power it into the outfield, and you can tell that the outfield respects her power by playing deep. Because they were so deep, they could not rein in the catch. That is the first non-double hit by Florida State today. And now Mac Leonard. 0 for 2 against Zabala. Robbed of a base hit by Alexander at shortstop back in the second inning. Squares the bunt. Also nips a piece of the home plate umpire, Emerus Addison, but this pitch, she's looking to move runners. Mac Leonard does have home run power, but look at the way she selflessly sacrifices. This one gets a piece of, it looks like everybody back behind the dish. <laughs> Freshman catcher, Sarah Gordon, in front of Addison is Leonard. Facing an 0-2 pitch. Well, and where has Florida State been vulnerable today? It's been on that outside part of the plate. When they fall behind, they are going for the swing and miss off the plate. So I would expect Roby to go back there. Does indeed. Leonard spoils it. Well, this is a tough spot for Louisville, knowing that they've got the tying run on base, the winning run at the plate, or the go-ahead run at the plate. Roby, definitely the arm I like in the circle in this situation. Hit to the right side. You get the middle runner in Edenfield. Harding now over at third, Leonard at first. Well, that's a veteran move by File to be able to come away with that base runner at second base, nabbing Edenfield. She didn't have a play at first. She didn't have a play at third. So heads up play to be able to get Edenfield, who's not known for her speed, over there at second base. Taylor Roby started the game last night, lasted two and two-third innings, gave up a couple of runs, got the no decision. And now Travis Wilson get a good shot of him, the third base coach. And Wakehaser steps in. Leonard has been pinch run four. It's Autumn Belvi. A little bit more speed over there at first base. Wakehaser, pardon me, has fouled out both times to right field, but that was against departed starter Alyssa Zabala. Going down to second without inducing a throw. Three one pitch to Wakehazer, who is having one heck of a year, red shirted with a ACL a couple of years ago, hit just 167 last year and has really upped her numbers. Punches it through the drawn in infield and Florida State plates a couple to tie this game up. And the chaos ensues when it comes to base runners. Florida State puts so much pressure on the defense. This ball 
Looks like it's going to be able to get grabbed by Easton Lotus at second base, but with them pulled in, she doesn't have the ability to move laterally as that ball gets on top of her so fast. Comes away with a huge hit to the outfield and evens up the score. Flaherty and you're right this is kind of like classic Florida State softball no lead certainly is safe for the other team this is not a team that hits a lot of home runs uncharacteristically for Florida State throw down it was a great throw and they got Amai Ross. Ross trying to steal and you knew that Florida State was going to put her in motion. They love to steal. They love to run. But look at the throw by Gordon on the money. And Ross, she's hung out to dry. That was a terrific throw to get the second out of the inning. Well, that's the first time Ross has been thrown out on a steal this year. She was a perfect 18 for 18. But Sarah Gordon gains the advantage. Bears repeating that Gordon is a true freshman back there, doing the catching for Louisville. To now Flaherty batting with nobody on base. Has one of three Florida State doubles this afternoon. And Pam, you already talked about it this inning, how Florida State had three doubles, all of those coming off of Zabala. Since Roby has entered, she's only given up singles, but they've been costly ones. Change up misses. Taylor Roby from Mount Washington, Kentucky, which is in the greater Louisville area. Sent skyward towards Otis. Light in the sun with the glasses on. Grabs it, but a two-run single by Waycaser has tied it up. Huge hit, punches it through the right side, allows the speed of Florida State to score. We now are all tied up. We are back at Tallahassee. At one point, Louisville led this game four to one, but we just had a three run sixth inning for the Seminoles. A couple of errors committed by the Cardinals during that time. Taylor Roby with her home run in the third inning, her nation leading 22nd of the season. And here we are all tied up as we head to the top of the seventh inning in Tallahassee. Mac Leonard, the third Florida State pitcher in the circle. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you on this final Saturday of the regular season. Florida State, the regular season champs again, thanks to a win last night in the series opener. And Louisville needing to win two games to get the three seed in the upcoming ACC tournament, which starts on Wednesday. So a brand new ball game as we hit the seventh. Here is Hannah File. Crowd is doubly upset. They thought it was a strike the first time and then they lost the appeal down. Well, this is a much better approach by Hannah File in this at bat. She swung at three straight pitches last time up out of the zone, this time showing much better plate discipline, knowing that they've got to push a run across to get a run here, or to first get a time. win. Oh, yeah, pardon me, first time she's faced Leonard.
So those of you who are looking for the NC State Pit game, that is coming up after us. Right now you can find it on the app. NC State with a win would take the 10th and final spot open for the ACC tournament. They're playing two today. Oh boy, Florida State thought that was a strike. Full count. On this ball down in the zone, it's one that Hannah File can absolutely tattoo, but she lets it go by thinking it's a ball, but it pushes the count to full. Yep, the home plate umpire, most importantly, Emmer Sasson, thought it was a strike, and it does go full. File does not have much of a strike zone. She's listed at 5-5. Five five. Got her. That's a tough spot. File did have pitches in that at bat to hit, but let the best one go by. The first strike that she saw was the best one, and Leonard just fills the bottom of the zone after that and gets it down and under the hands of File. Even if she had caught up to that one, it was going to be a foul ball, but a nice spot by Leonard, and that's Leonard's first strike out of the day. Leonard has retired all four batters she has faced so far. Is it a rally? I can't call it water bottle. If she's got some yeah, Gatorade in there, like, it looks like. I hope I hope it's Gatorade or Powerade. <laughs> and now Michaela <laughs> Hurst, who is their <laughs> premier pinch hitter, comes up for Alexander. She's had some big pinch hits this year. The grad student from St. Louis via the University of Utah. Hitting 391 as a pinch hitter coming into this weekend series. When part of her dominance comes in from just buying into her role. She's ready for the opportunity, so she sits on the bench and finds her timing and stays engaged the entire game for a moment just like this. With Leonard, she doesn't have a rise ball. So those balls that are sitting thigh high, belt high, you need to be absolutely wailing on them, knowing that this ball is only going to drop. First able to lay off of that one. Evens the count up at two and two. She did not play last year. Had a couple of meniscus tears and surgeries during an eight-month period. And as Jenny mentioned, coming back now and primarily as a pinch hitter. Took it, and that was a strike. Well, Pam, that's a cookie. You gotta unleash on that pitch. It is belt high. It is down Main Street. That is a difficult take. And that is a ball that Hurst should absolutely unload on. Leonard seems to have baffled these Louisville hitters as now Louisville feels their back against the wall. They're not capitalizing the way they did early in this game. Put the winkler up for the third time. These Louisville batters have seen four different Florida State pitchers now in the first two games of this series. Well, what you're seeing is these two teams handling pressure in much different ways. Louisville seems to be pressing with their back against the wall. Florida State is on the attack. And that's the difference between these two teams, knowing that Florida State has played from behind all game and Louisville now just falling behind last inning. Did Winkler go? Yes, she did. Mack Leonard just struck out the side. Mack Leonard showing that she's going to come in and put an exclamation point on how Florida State's going to play this one. Not only does she strike out the side, but Florida State comes to bat with a ton of emotion.
Louisville got off to a hot start in the second inning. It was a huge hit down at the bottom by Grant. Scored a couple for Louisville. And they were on the board in a big way. In the third inning, it was Taylor Roby with the huge solo shot. Not only did it give her the national lead in home runs, number 22 for her, but it gave Louisville the three nothing lead. But Florida State never sits back. They constantly attack. And Hallie Waycaser came away with a huge, huge hit to the right side that evened up the score. So now we sit tied in the bottom of the seventh, 4-4. Florida State coming up in a situation where they can walk it off for the win. They came away with last night's win against Louisville to open up the series. Came away with that 6-4 win. And now here today looking to win the series after winning their 18th regular season championship with the win last night. So we apologize for technical difficulties. Pam Ward is having some audio issues, so I will do my best to help you navigate through this stressful time for Louisville and Florida State as they sit even here in the bottom of the seventh. Christina Hartley steps in. She struck out in her past two plate appearances, both of those pitches away, looking to start things off for Florida State here at the bottom of the lineup as the eighth hitter in the lineup. Takes this ball the other way. It's a foul ball down the left field line, but you can see that you can see that Bethany Keene has now stepped in for Hartley with a bunch of defensive changes as Mac Leonard entered the circle for Florida State. Keene now enters the box for Christina Hartley. Really good eye as she lets that one go down in the bottom of the zone to even the count 2-2. Two -two. Keene typically entered into a game as a defensive replacement. Takes this one right back to Roby. Nice shot, able to get the easy play from Roby to file. And defense in the circle, such an important piece of the game. And Roby, not only is she tall, but very alert there as this ball comes hard, right back up the middle, able to extend, get the glove on it, and retire the first batter of the inning. And that brings up Josie Muffley. Actually, another pinch hitter coming in. We've got Katie Dack stepping in for Josie Muffley. Muffley, not a huge offensive threat. And so they bring in Katie Dack. The transfer coming over from Texas A&M this season. Dack, a huge home run threat. Tied with Edenfield at the top with 10 home runs. She's typically a big RBI producer, but in this situation looking to give Florida State a base runner or a walk-off win. Dak loves the ball. Belt high or up in the zone. All of her home runs have been near the top of the zone, so she's looking to step in and help Florida State's cause. This Florida State team loves to use the double. They lead the nation with the double, but have not been able to hit one off of Roby after they were able to rack up three early in the game before she relieved. And there you see the strength of Katie Dack. She gets jammed up in Florida State. You're hearing the crowd come alive as now we have a base runner for Florida State here in the bottom of the seventh. Taylor Roby rides that ball so hard in on her hands, but Dak strong enough to punch this one right back up the middle. Huge base hit for Florida State. Dak gets the single back up the middle and it flips over the lineup. Dak, not known for her speed, will be relieved. 
with a runner at first, and it'll be Muffley re-entering for herself over there at first base. So Muffley stands in over at first. She's got speed. And now Florida State with an opportunity to get a come from behind win. So as Dak flips over the lineup, it brings up Kaylee Mudge. Riding a 22 on game, ba on base game streak. She got in via the walk to start off the game and now stands in with an opportunity to give her team an, a chance to win this one after they sat for five innings behind. Kat Sandercock, Lonnie Alameda look on as Mudge steps to the box in an 0-2 count. Taylor Roby has been so good in the circle and this Louisville pitching staff has been extending off the plate as soon as they get ahead in the count. So Roby going outside with that pitch definitely expected. Mudge fly ball to the outfield, reined in by Otis out there in center. But that does not mean the threat is erased. Florida State at the top of the lineup has a ton of bats able to do damage. And as Janai Kerr comes up, she is one of those hitters you have to be careful of. Kerr, a ton of speed, two for three on the day. 21 hits in her past nine games. Big swing by Kerr. Knowing that one swing can win it. Kerr with a bunch of power, has eight home runs on the year, but now sits 0-2 in the count. Protecting that outside corner. Kerr knows that that one's been rung up a couple of times, so she's got to make sure that she puts a little bit of bat on that one. So a good job to keep the at bat alive as Taylor Roby tries to extend off the plate and get herself out of the inning. Ground ball back up the middle. And over there is short, Daisy Hess takes it herself, gets herself out of the inning. And we now go to extras. Welcome back to Tallahassee, where Louisville and Florida State are going into extra innings. Florida State with a big three-run six to send us into this extra time. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton-Hill joining you. After I, what I assume was an une uneventful bottom of the seventh, Jen. <laughs> Yep, it pretty much was. We did have some <laughs> uh, pinch hitters come in who had replaced people defensively, but with Mac Leonard back in the circle, we still have Keene over at first. And Harding now at third. So Louisville trying to Bounce back from a loss last night. Starting things off here in the top of the eighth inning. With Paige Garrity, Otis, and Lotus, followed by Roby due up against Leonard, but she has been absolutely terrific. 14 straight Louisville Cardinals have been retired since their last hit, and that was Taylor Roby's home run back in the third inning. 
Well, Pam, I'm looking for some more emotion coming out of these Cardinals. Knowing that this game sits even, they have an opportunity to beat Florida State. I want to see them on the fence. I want to see them cheering. I want to see the energy coming out of that dugout to help out Garrity at the plate. That is their first base runner. Since the third, a leadoff single for Garrity to start things off here in the eighth. What an awesome at bat. And now the Cardinals are up off the bench. They have to feed off of that base hit to be able to give themselves the momentum to get a run across. But this ball in the 3-4 hole, past the diving keen, great job to put wheels on the bases for Louisville and nobody out. And the top of the order coming up. I mean, Pam, this is the piece of the game that is goes unnoticed. That's an intangible that needs to be changed for Louisville, knowing that this is an opportunity to beat the top of the ACC. And a chance with a win today to keep their hopes alive of grabbing the number three seed in the upcoming ACC championship. You see a couple of players trying to liven things up, but not the Clapping's demeanor. Clapping's not enough. That's not You've got to get off the bench. You've got to be, you know, screaming and yelling and getting yourselves back in this game. Rally caps are not going to win it. You've got to be given energy out there to the field. Corby Otis, their best hitter, tries to get the bunt down. And it's a foul ball. It was called at the plate. Nice. So while the, while the, the crowd's going to go wild and the defense has to play it out. That ball was ruled foul by the home plate umpire right away. Emerus Addison ruled it immediately. Down on the ground, does not hit the batter, but Edenfield realizes that that ball is foul. She does go ahead and throw it in case it is not acknowledged by the home plate umpire, Emerus Addison, but it rolls to the right of the plate. That ball is foul very early. Holly April, the head coach, down there at third. Mac Leonard has just surrendered her first hit. Came in to relieve Reed to start the sixth inning. 0-2 pitch. Inside Louisville today, three for six with runners on base. Four runs on six hits and three errors. Louisville with five errors in the first two games of this series. But only one left on. One, two. Pounded in over the third. The play is made over at second after the throw over. Well, and this is just pure athleticism by this Florida State squad. Over there at third, Harding throws to Flaherty at second. Not only is her momentum taking her away from the throw, but she doesn't get that momentum back into her throw. Flaherty salvages that out and keeps Louisville out of scoring position. Easton Lotus has one of their hits today. The bunt gets Garrity. Oh, pardon me, gets Otis over to second. Well, and defensively, it's just your pitcher, Mac Leonard, coming out aggressively to be able to get on that ball quickly. Otis fast, no way to get her at second, but she stays close to the bag, doesn't get the throw behind. But now Louisville, they've got two outs, but a runner in scoring position. And Pam, this is a fabulous call. We talked to, to Lonnie Alameda about would she walk Taylor Roby. We saw how she had to go at her last night with bases loaded, but in a situation with the game on the line, they walk the biggest hitter in the lineup who no, is now tied again in national home runs as Kern at Indiana has hit another home run. So now both sitting with 22. Roby with a home run off of Reed earlier in this game. And I think especially two outs, first base open. I think this is a no brainer, but we have seen a lot of teams go after the heavy hitters. 
Yeah, there is no need to go after Roby in that situation, but now as Sarah Gordon steps up, she's got long ball potential too, but they have been able to gain the advantage over here. They've struck her out twice and then just a ground ball to shortstop in this game by Gordon. Monty Alameda said it all depended on the situation, whether or not she would walk someone. But in that situation is a Roby gets pinch run for. And now up with two on and two away. Otis, the lead runner over there at second base. Vanessa Miller pinch running for Roby in that sprinter stance. time make sure she's on the same page with everyone well and knowing that Leonard is a down ball pitcher it's going to be hard for Sarah Gordon to elevate and hit this one out but there's always the chance that Leonard can leave a drop ball too high and we've seen her do it already in this game. Muffley ends the inning. Throwing out Gordon. Louisville strands two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. We have a tie ball game as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Florida State Coming up with three runs in the sixth inning. Taylor Roby with a big home run in the third, but their four to one lead has evaporated. Waycaser with a game tying two run single, and that is where we stand as we head to the eighth. Good look at Roby who started this game as a DP and now in the circle, and she will be Facing Kaylee Harding to lead things off. Meet of the order. Harding, Edenfield, and Leonard all do up here in the eighth inning. Well, and this is a part of the lineup that can really pack a punch. You know that you've got speed. You know you've got power. So Roby going to have to bear down here against this part of the lineup. But starting off Harding with a 2-0 count, definitely not the way she wanted to start. Harding reached on an error and scored in that three-run third inning. A couple of errors committed by Louisville in that frame, and that gets through. Good start for the eighth for the Knowles. I mean, you've got to attack a 2-0 pitch, knowing that Roby doesn't want to fall 3-0. You know this ball is going to be very hittable. And Roby leaves it big enough for Harding to punch it through the 5-6 hole. And now Edenfield coming up. Very dangerous part of the order. Edenfield had a bloop single her last time up. Side corner does not get the call. We talked about how does energy translate, and there, Florida State all on the bench. Ooh, but that ball hit softly out to left. Pickle Winkler able to come away with it. But this is the difference, Pam, in this ball game. The benches. Louisville was all seated. 
Florida State all up on the fence. And out there in left, good advancement by Winkler to come away with a huge out and leave Harding at first. And now here's Mac Leonard. He's one of three Seminoles pitchers that we have seen today. Started the game at first. And he's been in the circle and shut down this Louisville offense. Louisville has not scored since the Roby home run back in the third inning. Well, and Pam, maybe more impressive is that Leonard has not given up a free pass. She did give the intentional walk, but that was with intent. So Leonard's been strong in the circle. Handled by the second baseman. They're able to turn two to end the inning. 4-6-3, double play. We might have a challenge here. Umpiring crew with the caucus, Emerus, Emerus Addison, Brad Newton, and Craig Hyde. And it is reported indeed as a double play started by Lotus out there at second. And they're able to get the nice 4-6-3 to get out of the inning. We are going to the top of the ninth inning, and this is one way to watch a game at Joanne Graff Stadium. Back of the pickup, you got the lounge chair working, and they are getting now their second inning of extra softball between Louisville and their beloved Seminoles of Florida State. Florida State clinching the regular season championship yesterday with a win over Louisville, as well as the top seed in the upcoming ACC tournament. And Louisville, their bats have pretty much been silent since the third inning. Daisy has starting things off in the ninth against Mac Leonard. This is her fourth inning of relief. One four innings is the longest outing for Leonard on this season. She threw that against UCLA earlier in the season. And sends it into left field, drifting back into foul territory, handled by Mudge. And with Mac, Still coming back from that back injury. Not a ton of innings on the season. But look at this ball. Look at the beautiful shot we were able to grab. Little bird flying through and Mudge grabbing the first out of the inning. Yeah, the bird very wisely got out of the way. <laughs> Mudge, one of the seniors being honored this weekend. Last weekend of the regular season, and now Hannah File, who has struck out a couple of times, including the first time she met Leonard. That one, first pitch sent to Kerr, out number two. Pretty efficient outing so far for Leonard this inning. Just three pitches, able to record two outs, and Louisville pressing here in extras. Still with something to play for for Louisville. It will be either a three or a four seed in South Bend next weekend. It will be a three if they can win today and tomorrow. Alexander goes after the first pitch. Yeah, Louisville really pressing and aggressive early in at bats knowing that Leonard likes to fill the bottom of the zone, it's easy to attack against a drop ball pitcher. Ellie April telling us that 
Her team seemed to come together at a unit at the right time. Towards the end of the season, brought a nine game winning streak into this series. And unlike Florida State, they don't have a lot of experience in, if, if you will, big game situations. And Florida State is a team that just puts pressure on you from the first pitch of the game to the last pitch. And we've seen a pretty somnambulant dugout for them, very quiet. Led four to one. Now a three one pitch on the way to Alexander with Winkler scheduled to hit next. Alexander with one of their six hits on the afternoon. Here's Pickle. We will have the finale of this series for you tomorrow at noon Eastern time on the ACC network. We expect to see and hope to see Sandra Cox start for Florida State and Lonnie Alameda who has so many choices on her staff this season. Taylor Warby looking on. Walker. So that's the first intentional free pass. Well, I guess you can't call the walk intentional, but she let her get away and so Leonard knowing that this is an important place in the lineup for Louisville. They don't want to flip it back over to the top where those big bats are coming in. And because of that, we've got some movement down in the bullpen with Kat Sandercock up and warming. And the fans are excited because Kat Sandercock is coming into the game, the fourth pitcher that Florida State has used in this game. She is their ace, but Mack Leonard did a really good job coming in, just a, a couple of walks surrendered and one hit in. She is going through senior. And here she is against Sander Koch. So Holloway hitting for Winkler. First pitch. Flaherty. That's as efficient as it gets. Sander Koch threw a lot more warm up pitches than that one pitch it took to get Holloway. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. Welcome back to Tallahassee where the, the fans want this to end right now. Bottom of the ninth inning. Louisville and Florida State locked up in a 4-4 game. And yeah, look at the difference in the dugout. Those Florida State players, along with their fans, trying to come away with another series win. They won game one yesterday. Um, 
Wakehazer starts things off. Taylor Rovey in the circle, grabs the first pitch that's hit right back to her. One pitch, one out. Yeah, you talked about how Sandercock was efficient. Well, there, Taylor Roby, one pitch, one out. Great defense in the circle. But this is the advantage of playing at home. Florida State has a huge crowd here today for senior weekend. And that energy is spilling out into their dugout. And this crowd is completely engaged. Now bottom of the order, seventh hitter Devin Flaherty, who doubled back in the second inning. Florida State with seven hits on the afternoon. That one is fisted into short right and a terrific running catch by Lotus. And that was actually pretty scary as File was retreating. She does a nice little hurdle leap over Lotus to prevent any injury to both of those players. Great catch. We talk about angle and aggression on defense. Lotus had that one wrapped up. A couple of quick outs now in the ninth inning. Now Bethany Keene coming to the plate. This Holly April calls her infield in. Well, and when you look at the difference between these two teams, Louisville has only played two extra inning games this season. One win against North Carolina State in the ninth and a loss against Illinois in the eighth. So Florida State has been in much or many more pressure filled situations than Louisville this season. And you're seeing that play out as Louisville tries to establish themselves in the ACC standings and not relinquish that three spot. Bethany Keene, who came in to play first base after Mac Leonard went from first to pitcher, gets her first at bat. Second year for Florida State. After starting at first base when she was at South Florida. Taking all the way on the 3-0. Got her in shortstop. Flew out her last time up. First time facing Roby this afternoon. the end of the bat handled by file who steps on first to end the inning we're going to the tent Louisville came up out hot to start the game it was a huge second inning for them as they were able to push two runs across they got the early advantage over Florida State 
Taylor Roby in the third, added another one with a huge shot to center. Louisville was able to grab a 3-0 lead early on, but Florida State able to respond on a huge play by Grant. A ball pushed to the right side, scored two, tied everything up, and we sit even as we head to the 10th. Roby with uh, the big home run back in the third inning. And yes, it was at 1.4 to 1. And aren't we lucky? We are tied for the longest ACC game of the season as we go to the 10th inning. Uh, last word is NC State took a 3 to 2 lead over Pittsburgh. And a game that, in theory, is now 7 to 3 Pitt. They have come storming back. NC State in a must win situation to try to leapfrog over Georgia Tech and get the get the 10th and final spot in the ACC tournament, which begins Wednesday in South Bend. Kat Sandercock threw one pitch in the ninth inning to pop out Holloway, the pinch hitter. Now facing Paige Garrity. She is tagged out. And that turns the lineup over to Otis. Keen with the play over there at first. Otis one for four, but still Hitting over 400 on the season. Three-time ACC Player of the Week this season. One pitch, got her. Thrown out by Flaherty. And you need to be aggressive early in an at-bat. However, you need to be on time as a hitter. Your job in the on-deck circle is to get your timing, whether it's off those warm-up pitches in between innings or pitches that are being thrown to other batters. And Louisville right now getting jammed up and pushing the ball the opposite way. Lotus, the number two hitter. Infield single back in the first inning. Squares to bunt, but then brings it Brings the bat back. Sander Cock has gotten three outs on a grand total of four pitches. That's a strike. There's Sandra Koch using that elevated pitch new to her repertoire this year. She trusts it, and it puts her ahead in the count. Now the 0-2 to Lotus. Just outside. One, two, Lotus sends it up in the air where it is tracked all the way by Kerr to retire the side. Another efficient inning for Sander Cock. Top of the order coming up for Florida State. Mudge will lead things off. Bottom of the 10th inning coming your way from Tallahassee. Florida State is the top of the order coming up as they're trying to nail down this series win. And believe it or not, Florida State is only one of two teams without a walk-off win this year. Syracuse is one of them. And maybe you should believe it because Florida State is a team that usually doesn't have a lot of close games, so they don't need a walk-off win. 
to get a win today, it would have to be a walk-off win. And will it happen here in the bottom of the 10th? This is where you want to be if you're Florida State. March Kerr and Harding, your top of the order, up against Taylor Roby, who came in to relieve back in the sixth inning. Melissa Zabala did a good job as a starting pitcher, but a couple of errors pushed through. They did not help their cause, certainly in the sixth inning. And Florida State definitely a team that you don't want to give any extra outs to. Will make you pay. Well, and they're just looking for base runners. We've talked about how chaos on the base passes, how Florida State likes to disrupt the defense, and so getting Mudge on here would give them that advantage. Tries to bunt her way on, but instead goes to one and two. Well, and Pam, this is the longest game at the Seminole Softball Complex since game two of the 2018 Super Regional against LSU. That one went 11 innings. I am hoping that we do not break that record here today. You don't want to go 12? I know Louisville wants to. <laughs> one, two. Mudge sends it into the stands. We talked to Lonnie Alameda several innings ago. Technically, not a lot to play for. They've, they've got the number one seed and the regular season championship sewn up. That's a base hit. Good start for the Knowles. And that's a slow roller. And you saw Otis. That's a smart play. Otis charged that from center because you, you know that Mudge is thinking about taking second. Every Knoll is thinking about taking second. It's a diving play by Hess at short, and she's pulled in, knowing that Mudge likes to use the slap or the high hop. And so as a defender, you pull in to try to get the speed moving down the line. But by moving in, she loses lateral, the lateral advantage, and it gives Mudge a chance to start off the inning at first. Mm. Denied Kerr, sends it deep into center, but not deep enough right at the lip of the warning track for a loud first out. Well, and Kerr has been on fire in this one. She already has two doubles on the day, and as she hit this one, I thought it had a chance to get out of here. But it stays in the ballpark but that is a deep drive that even the fans thought was gonna find its way over the wall. Otis able to track it down. Kaylee Harding singled her last time up. over there at first base does have 14 steals on the year. Do you risk that now? Not with this part of the lineup up. Go ahead and let the bats work. Ed field on deck. Leonard due up after that. Got the call near the knees. And Florida State just three for 18 with runners on base this afternoon. Very uncharacteristic for this club. Tapped over to short. And it has had trouble getting it out of her glove and everyone's safe. Well, and that's where speed kills because of the huge advantage that Florida State has with base running technique. Mudge gets off so well, and as this ball goes back up the middle, and Hess has a hard time getting it out of her glove, Mudge able to get into second base easily. And an infield single. Remember in softball, you can't leave the base until the ball is out of the pitcher's hand, so Mudge got down there very quickly and yes once a little bit of hesitation and you saw that wasn't even close at second Ed Fields had some big hits throughout her career 
Good cut. Yeah, definitely a healthy swing out of Enfield on that one. But she's got the ton of power. She's not matched her power numbers from last season, but did have a huge grand slam against Colgate earlier in the year. She likes the ball up in the zone, and there's your Area 51 sign out there in left. One-one to Edenfield does not bite on the outside pitch. Edenfield popped up and it is handled at first base for the second out. to Mac Leonard now. Two runners on, two outs. Florida State really struggling. Just one for seven with runners in scoring position. Mac Leonard does not end it with the nice running catch. Florida State ends the inning and strands two. Huge hit by Mac Leonard, but it's reeled in out there and left. Bickle Winkler, big catch, and we head to the 11th. Softball is continuing. Yes, we're going to the 11th inning Louisville and Florida State, but the fans are still engaged. It's Florida State just left a couple of runners on in the last inning. We go to the 11th. We've done it, Jen. The longest game in the ACC this season, 11 innings, which is four extra innings. Sandercock continuing in the circle. But she's been so efficient in this one. I mean, just eight pitches has been able to record four outs. She fills the zone with strikes and her defense has shown up behind her. And look who's leading it, leading it off for Louisville. It is Taylor Roby who hit a home run about three hours ago. And that has been it. They have not scored since the third inning. Roby first pitch, swinging, what a play. Flaherty over there at second base. Defense shines behind Sandercock. This ball looked like it was gonna find the grass, no doubt. Flaherty was shaded towards second base, but her first step was a great drop step, and that extension pulls away a huge first out for Florida State. Wow, terrific, and that keeps the leadoff off bases now for Sarah Gordon, who is also a threat to go deep. Hit one yesterday, looking for her first hit of today. And I know, Jenny, you were an elite second baseman at Arizona, so you must love that Flaherty stuff. Well, and what you have to do as a second baseman is know what pitch is coming. That helps you anticipate, and you can see that she checks her wristbound every time the pitch is called to know what to expect. Yeah, it's remarkable. Cool. Florida State ultimately winning to clinch the ACC regular season championship. Well, and Lonnie Alameda talked about how a regular season championship means more to her than an ACC champion tournament championship, knowing that the tournament championship brings you the automatic qualifying bid to the postseason, but a regular season championship shows that you've had so much consistency throughout the year in conference play. Pitch off the plate. She has won a lot of championships. They had the 
regular season trophy on the field as soon as they won last night. First regular season title since 2019, which for Florida State is an eternity. Gordon off the end of the bat, Flaherty, looking like JDH out there, Jenny Dalton Hill. I mean, at second base, that defensive play this inning has been huge, and it was for Kat Sandercock in the circle. She has been dominant throughout her career, but it was maybe that first no-hitter of her career that was so impressive, required just 37 pitches to come away with it. That happened earlier this season against Syracuse. And another remarkable thing, she's made 36 appearances, split down the middle, 18 starts, 18 relief appearances. Daisy Hess takes ball one. Well, and perhaps the piece of Katherine Sandercock that I'm most impressed by is her split between her walks and strikeout numbers. Coming into today, 75 strikeouts, 12 walks, and has been able to get three more strikeouts here today. Or no, I apologize. That was the third pitcher we saw. I mean, my lineup card is a kind mess. of a mess. I apologize. <laughs> but Kat Sandercock has been able to do such a good job, just fill the zone, trust her defense, and rely on the swing and miss to get those strikeouts. Sandercock, the fourth pitcher that Lonnie Alameda has used this afternoon. She has faced six batters and has sent them all down. Great play by Flaherty to Rob Roby of a hit to start the 11th inning, but other than that, she has made it look easy. <laughs> Off of Hess's foot. Got that protective gear on the left foot, left leg. And any time you face a drop ball pitcher, that drop down in leaves that front foot very vulnerable. That piece of protective equipment is something I wish I had when I played because <laughs> I wore out that front leg. Now the 2-2. Got her. That's the first strikeout for Sandra Kopp. Huge pitch, down and in, gets the nice swing and the miss to be able to get herself out of the inning. Will Florida State be able to respond as they bring up the bottom of the lineup? And you see Florida State and Duke nailing down the first two seeds. That tournament will be played at Notre Dame. Holly Wakehaser starting things off for Florida State in the bottom of the 11th. She is the reigning ACC Player of the Week. She's going to want to go back to South Bend because there last week she tore it up. She, she hit 700 last week against in, uh, Notre Dame. She was six for eight. Two home runs and six runs driven in in just one game of that series. Facing Taylor Roby now. Hey, Kayser had a two run single and the th three run six that tied this game up at four. Now has a chance to look at a 3 1 pitch. Flaherty and Keene do up next. Inside, walked her. That's second straight inning. And that they have gotten Florida State the lead off runner on base. Well, and the key to this one is the percentages that come into it when you walk the lead off batter. It does not bode well for Louisville. They're going to have to play some really solid defense behind her. They've struggled defensively today. Here we go with three errors on the day. As Flaherty steps into the box. They had three errors yesterday. Oh, 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 
Gordon keeping a close eye on Waycaser down at first. Hits solidly into center field to the wall and gone. Devin Flaherty with the walk-off home run ends the game. The first walk-off win of the year for Florida State hit the 300th pitch of this game. 300 pitches between all the pitchers, and there were a lot of them. And she ends it in style. Florida State's winning streak goes to 12, and they have won this series. Devin Flaherty this season is known mainly for her speed, had not hit a home run this year, had six home runs last year, but look at this one. On the 300th pitch of the game, Devin Flaherty puts a charge in it, and Florida State able to walk it off with a two-run shot in the 11th. What a time to hit your first home run of the year, and Kat Sandercock has picked up her 20th victory of the season. She was brilliant coming out of the pen. We'll see you tomorrow at noon Eastern for the finale of this series. Pitt NC State, what's left of it, coming up next. For Jenny Dalton Hill and our entire crew, I'm Pam Ward. As we say so long from the Hassett.